You wrote pretty movingly about when your father recounted the moment he learned of Emmett Till's death when he was a teenager in Ghana. I'm wondering how he, how they, your parents, relate to what's going on now differently than you do. I think like so many immigrant families from the Caribbean to, to Africa, we are, we are just taught that, you know, well, just work hard culturally. We just, we have differences. And of course, you know, I, I grew up in the South part of Dallas, which is heavily, heavily black and, and, but like middle class, middle class or so. Um, we just didn't really talk much about these things uh, on the occasion if, you know, maybe I think I remember once hearing about my brother being called the N-word at soccer practice. My mom just said, oh, I, just, I took care of it. And like, that was it. We never really had longer uh, discussions. But I think now I'm realizing that there was probably a lot that they were holding inside about their experiences of being black hair. My mom was telling me she'd never told me about this before, but like that my dad, uh, my dad was uh, a doctor. He's retired now. He would, um, if he was coming to and from the hospital and going fast, he'd make sure to have his lab coat nearby, or his white coat or his stethoscope nearby, just in case he gets pulled over, just in case he can tell them, approve to them, hey, I'm a doctor, like my life <laughs> is valuable. And it's that, that they never have spoken to me about that before. You did say, and it was a hopeful thing, um, that, you, that, that many outside the United States are not just looking at the U.S. and saying, I hate everything about that system, but also seeing the grassroots movement and being inspired by it. And a grassroots movement that is by no means only the black American community participating in it. You know, what I have always liked to say is that uh, America is a developing country, right? To move from a slaveholding economy to a democracy, a multi-ethnic democracy, um, is, is a unique experience that, that, that the entire world has been looking to for such a long time. As much as it is a bit of a perilous time, in the sense of there are people dying from the coronavirus, um, perilous in terms of even the protesters who have been met by force, um, people who are risking their jobs to speak out even about racism. Um, I think this is, a, this is a, a struggle that needs to be had and a necessary struggle for, for our growth. I feel like this moment is like very pregnant with promise for like just imagining differently. And it might not get all the way to the level of I mean, whatever sort of will happen. But I think, you know, we are reimagining our, what community means, um, who, who, what it means to, to lead. Uh, and I think it, to a certain extent, I don't feel like we're looking to our politicians right now to, to lead. They're reacting to what the conversation is being pushed toward, literally. Like people are pushing over statues of, Supremacy, white supremacists and enslavers and the Confederacy. And now we've seen people are willing to be in the streets in the middle of a pandemic, facing tear gas and bullets and curfews in order to push for a different America. And that should be hard to ignore. It should be.